Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you that you have gathered us here. Only you could accomplish this. And Holy Spirit, we honor you tonight. Lord Jesus, Yeshua, we bless you tonight. And Father, we say, Hallowed is your name. Now I want you to turn and bless someone near you. I'm going to, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Jamie and the team to stay up here with me. Just give him a hand clap and thank him. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. I I don't I, I can't tell you what you being here means in the heavens. There's no way to tell you. How is that for an awesome welcome? <laughs> we'll just take your mic away. We'll give you one that won't work, but we want to hear you, what you have to say. I love it. No, I, I can't tell you what it means to me personally, you being here. Uh, three and a half years ago, when... We went through the thing. We went through worldwide, the pandemic, for, or what all that was. I wrote a book on it. Within a, I, I was asked by Charisma to write a book, and they asked me, could I write it within eight days? And, and I said, well, you know, none of us have anything else to do. You know, we might as well can. And I, I did, and... Uh, that book is very helpful today. Um, I've been in this for a very long time now uh, in our nation, starting back in 1978, really praying for our nation, involved with various groups that are praying for our nation. And... During that time, the first week, for three weeks, I would sit in my backyard and I would really seek the Lord. And uh, I would pray in tongues. And I, I'm not a big tonguer. You know, I, I'm not, I interpret tongues. So, you know, you know your gift and the manifestation. And, and if someone speaks in tongues, I don't hear tongues, I hear words. 
And I never have, I've been speaking in tongues since I was 18 years old. I got baptized uh, by Pente- uh, in the Spirit of God when a Pentecostal pastor, we were in the hospital room together and he led me to the Lord. And, and But it, it was always not my role in the church, so to speak. And <clears throat> so... And I would pray in tongues, and I would pray for America. And then I would ask the Lord about me uh, and where, what he had planned. And because my life had been going around the world, John and Cheryl Price, and many people in this room on various Occasions we've been around the world many, many times and 160 nations, you know, and all of a sudden God stopped us. So you always ask him what he's saying. And of course, in New Jersey, I had an incredible encounter with the Lord where he showed me our nation. And, um, That was after Dutch Sheets and I had been to every state, written a history, prophetic history book on the states, been to every state again, been to all the port cities, and really, you know, you get to a place in your life where you have prayed. I was thinking about our dear sister, 96 years old. Just think of all the prayers she's prayed here. I mean, and you've prayed. You know, you've you've prayed everything you know to pray. And, And I said to the Lord, you're going to have to really tell me what to do because I don't have a real religious background. And I don't have uh, a religious push to do things. And he began to speak to me and tell me that he had cities. Because I had been faithful, there were cities that he wanted to call forth this hour. And <clears throat> it was really quite a meeting. He took me to the uh, parables of the minor where those that invested, he would give them 10 cities or five cities. And he started reminding me of all my investments throughout the world. And yet, I really had no distinct call to just intercede and press forward. And, you know, I have good friends who are very demanding on my call. And they would say, well, if you're not hearing anything, what, what, What's going to happen with us? I said, I'm hearing what God wants to say to me. And the Lord instructed me not to be listening for something I had heard before. And so about 14 months ago now, because you guys have been coming over here for 13 months, I had a dream. And Abby, I see you and your husband there, and it's such a blessing to see you. And I had a dream about Pennsylvania. Well, in the vision God had given me in 20, uh, back when he visited me in New Jersey in uh, 2008, it's been that long ago goodness. 
and caught me up and showed me every state. He showed me Pennsylvania, and I have been devoted to Pennsylvania. I mean, there was one year the Lord told me any time I was invited to be in Pennsylvania, to go and labor with the people here. And we went so many places, and it was just a blessing to be with so many different groups. Ruth, I remember being with you, and of course, a good friend of mine, Joseph Garlington, and so many of you up here, Abby, so many others. And so in this dream, the Lord was taking me back to every place I had been to in Pennsylvania. Our last 50-state tour meeting was in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia at the Catholic Church. And that's where the Lord told us to end what he had begun two years prior. And so the Lord in this dream was taking me to every place throughout Pennsylvania we had been, and then all of a sudden, he spoke. And he said, until you gather in Scranton, you will not see revival in this nation. <laughs> Just that clear. It was so clear, so loud, that it awakened me. I immediately I called and, and said, listen, I, I don't know anything about why God would say, Scranton. And I'm sure some of you don't know why you would say Scranton. <laughs> but it was that clear. And until Scranton began to gather, America would not have revival. Now, can you imagine after all the places I've been to. And all the incredible, huge, huge gatherings for the Lord to say until Scranton, Pennsylvania begins together, you will not see revival in America. Now, we have people here from Massachusetts, which I love dearly, and we have people here from New York, Les, uh, uh, Apostle Ron Domina, uh, Al uh, who, and Deb, who, who led the prayer movement in New York for so long, and Al and Casey Hawk, they're here. I mean, just incredible people. Uh, Almost, we almost saw an outbreak in Rochester, New York one time. And that's why I had to wait for almost three years for the Lord to say, the sign will be for America to have revival when Scranton, Pennsylvania begins to gather. Look at somebody next to you and say, you have created a sign for the whole nation.
I don't think we're here for any other reason. It's a little overwhelming. I was overwhelmed, Jamie, during worship. I mean, it's overwhelming, and I don't get overwhelmed real easily. I'm overwhelmed that God has used you to start a new move of the Spirit throughout a whole nation. And then, you know, I said, you know, I've gone through so much this year. I just want to get there a day early. And I told Cheryl, we'll come in uh, Thursday night. I just want to go to bed. I want to rest. I want to ponder what in the world the Lord is doing with us here. And then all hell broke loose. I mean... We couldn't get through Chicago to get here. And then we regrouped and said, okay, we'll fly out 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll go through Charlotte to get here. Every flight that we were to be on to get into Wilkes Bar uh, Airport here, we couldn't get here by air. So I am on the flight coming from Dallas to Charlotte, and the concierge key lady writes me and says, I don't think you're going to make your flight to the Scranton area. What do you want me to do? I said, would you please just get me as close as you can get me there? (laughs) If you'll just get me close, we'll get there. And next thing I knew, we were in Philadelphia. Now, this year is very important. I want to share a few things with you. And then I feel like during worship, Jamie, the Lord began to prophesy to us. So I want to loose that prophetic word to you. I, I, I'm not here. I'll teach something tomorrow, but that is not what we're here for tonight. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm telling you, God is here. And. I'm not sure that we understand that this is the model of what he will be doing throughout America. Uh, And you have created a new model here. And all it takes is three or four uh, all of all it takes is you saying, okay, I don't know who this John Price is, but if God wants to send him over here to us, we'll take him. And for 13 months, it's amazing. And you feel the atmosphere change. And I think Cheryl said it all. We, we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. And sometimes it takes God speaking to make us see how he really sees us. You could get so lost in Scranton and used to Scranton that you not see how God sees Scranton. See, that's the beauty of the Lord. The first time he met Simon, he said, they call you Simon, but I will call you Peter. And it wasn't 
till three years later that the Lord caused that prophetic word that he gave him the first time he saw it to manifest and his new identity to come forward. You see, we don't see us or we get used to what we are rather than who we should be. And so with that, here's a couple of things the Lord has said to me, Aaron, if you'll help me. Uh, This is how I think he sees Scranton. He sees it as a place of revival. Now, revival means life is coming back where life had departed. The first example of revival is Jacob uh, in the Word of God after he has lost Joseph and the brothers have deceived him and sold him and He's been down ruling Egypt, and the brothers, God orchestrates the brother, brothers back into Joseph's path. See, the Lord is orchestrating paths all the time. And all of a sudden, Joseph develops a way to go back and tell his father, and the brothers go back and say, your son Joseph, the double portion anointing. And that was why they didn't like it. They knew if they got one portion, Joseph got two portions. And they didn't like him that he could tap in to God with dreams. And that his dad favored it. And he he sends him back. And think about now, 17 years later, when they're walking up to Jacob and they're looking at Jacob and they say, your son Joseph is alive And he's ruling all of Egypt. The Bible says his heart stood still because of the unbelief. In other words, the very ones who had lied to him and told him that an animal had killed him brought back the mantle for the future, gave it back to him. That coat of many colors said, that's gone now for you. All of a sudden, they're telling him he's alive, and not only is he alive, he's over all of Egypt now. And then God says something to him, and this is where I want you to start seeing Scranton for revival. Said, they heard the words that, he heard the words that only Joseph could have spoken, those prophetic words that the brothers brought back to him. See, when you start rehearsing the prophecies, that have been spoken and you start remembering what God has said and tried to do, whether it didn't get done or not. And then they said, and when he saw the wagons fill with supply, his heart revived. And you know what that says to us? For revival to come, 
we have to rehearse what God has said about a city or an area. We have to remember that God had a purpose no matter what tried to kill the purpose. And then we have to also know that there's a breakthrough of supply of provision for our journey ahead. And God said, America, until Scranton starts gathering, America will not see revival. Go figure. I mean, only God can say things like that. We have books of prophecies over states and cities. And yet, he spoke something different for this nation and said, until I see that kingdom, people that I had planned gather into Scranton to worship, this nation will not see revival. Now look at somebody and say, it means something, you being here tonight. And who knows why, what all he knows that we don't know. And I'm a history buff. And trust me, I've studied and tried to find something. <laughs> why? God would single out Scranton. And yet, he showed me something. He said, Scranton will be known as the crossroad for the revolution ahead. Now let me... Here's the way I'm going to do this tonight. I'm going to share something, then I'm going to prophesy. And the Lord would say to you, you have spent the last 13 months breaking a spirit of religious rebellion. The Lord says you have broken a rift in this atmosphere that would have ruined a nation in days ahead. You have faced off the religious rift of this land, saith the Lord. And because you have faced off that religious rift, I will now turn the rebellion that has come from this territory into a revolution. Let me stop for a moment because there's a fine line between rebellion and revolution. Because revolution is something that is a surprise happening, something that happens in a way that it mobilizes such a change that it actually looks like rebellion, but it creates benefit. And the Lord says, let me say it a different way. 
coming out of Scranton will be a benefit for this nation. Now, let me do a couple of more things. See, we're in a new historical era. That began in uh, September of 2019. We shifted into what is known in Hebrew, the pay era, which pay means the voice. It has several meanings. It means coming face to face. It means Passover. And why we could so clearly hear the Lord, you could see that the Passover of 2020 would begin the future history of America and the world. Now, I'm just as devoted to many na other nations in the world, but I love the nation God chose for me. And this nation now, God has brought it to the crossroads of revolution, uh, just shift it. And so, beginning at Passover 2020, every Passover is a milestone in a new era. This new era, it's historically new. We have an incredibly rich history, but now we're recording the next season's history. Mary, now that's important for the first people to understand that. And it's this Passover era Every year we get evaluated on how we cross over. And then it's a new wineskin era. Now, John, I want the elder to share the, what the Lord gave her about the wineskin. So if you'll come up here with me. It's a new wineskin era. There she is, right? Third row back. Uh, that means we're changing form and we're receiving revelation we've never received before. Don't make it all spooky. I was, I, I've gotten into this praying in tongues thing. Because Robert spoke on it last week, so I said, okay, I'm going to do it every day for 15 minutes, Lord. You know, I'm a good church person now. Now. And I said, he spoke on tongues. It was the best message ever. I'm going to pray in tongues. And I started praying in tongues for 15 minutes, and all of a sudden I just heard prophetically things I'd never heard before. And one of the, yeah, John had preached on it at our place. I remember the message. But, you know, some of us, we're brain heavy at times. Never been my problem. No. That's why you could preach on it. Now, uh, and uh the Lord said this to me. I've recorded every day the one thing he did in me. Because he's done something in me every day. But what he said to me yesterday was this. It's painful when you're shedding last season's skin. 
I looked over the Lord. I said, I feel like a snake. I'm telling you, I, I don't. And I, I, I saw the relationship, what we're all going through. We are shedding last season's skin, and we're having to come out of it. And, and peeling that skin off can be painful. That's like a new wine skin for me. Now, give us that word. Okay. Hi, my name is Leslie. I'm part of John and Cheryl's church in New Jersey. Uh, I'm part of their special ops team, and I got a word yesterday, um, and it was talking about Chuck here in Scranton. I saw him with a corkscrew, and he was on a plot of land, and he put this corkscrew down into the land. He twirled it around. Pulled, when he pulled it out, all this debris came flying out, and after that came this new wine. And here's what the Lord, I'm going to read what I wrote, because this is what the Lord had said to me. Um, the Lord said, all the preparation so far has led to this moment when Chuck comes to release new wine into the new wineskins who have gathered. That's us. We're the new wineskins who have gathered together in Scranton. The new wine has been held back from flowing forth and needs to be uncorked. Let's, and then this is what I said to them, that, that we needed to make a decree. So they've been praying since yesterday about this. Let's declare that new wine will be released abundantly into all those in attendance, that's all of us, and those viewing online, because this will be available online, and those praying, because there are people who are praying who can't make it here. Um, and that the uh, wine will flow through the U.S. and release kingdom power across the land. So I declare that kingdom power is being released across the land because of what is happening this weekend here in Scranton. Let's thank God for that. Now I want you to do something. Let's all stand up for a moment. You're going to reach down with that corkscrew. Look how many of you are here now. You're going to take that court screw by the spirit, a prophetic act, and you're going to screw it into the ground. Now, Father, we decree that all of these court screws are unlocking years of debris. We decree right now that that which has been layered over and even roots that have been crusted over, we decree that all of a sudden, let's pull it up and pull it out. We decree that there is a cork popping going on in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Let's give a shout. Now, there's just a couple more things I want, and then I'll, I'll teach more. But, you know, tonight, God is doing something because you're here. And at the end of April, <coughs> the Lord told me, I want you to get outside of America and look back at it. And so I thought, you know, I don't want to go to Mexico. It's too much craziness down there right now. Uh, uh, Canada, you know, it's, I, I love it. But and so I thought, well, you know, it's only about an hour and a half to the Bahamas. And listen, guys, you don't look at me. I don't do sun very well. And, and I knew, yeah. And I, I knew I was supposed to go there and pray for two days. I knew we had people there, but I just knew I was supposed to pray. 
And the second day I was there, the Lord fell on me for America. Now, I just sent this out. Uh, I've gone over it with several of the people that I run with uh, and Dutch Sheets, and we've had several meetings on it, and gave me direction what to do starting after Feast of Tabernacles in September where we would address every state where everybody in the state could join with us uh, virtually first. Then we would have some regional gatherings next year to gather the remnant and the army that God's raising up for this hour. In some way, why I think the Lord fell on me when I got here, because he said to me, I am going to raise up a remnant group that has never been raised up before. And when we, I love it. Somebody's liking it. I'm telling you. And, and when worship started, it was as if he said, see, they began here. Now, this meeting represents to me the beginning of the next move of God in this nation. Not a move that's coming. And then, you know, looking at some of the history of Scranton, why would all the presidents come here? God knows. Why would our present president be from here? God knows. There is not just an incredible root that's coming alive here. Why would the rebellion against the Catholic Church be so strong here in history? Against religion, but never breaking out of religion. See, all of a sudden, you begin to see why Scranton... God sees Scranton. He says, when I transform Scranton, you watch a nation get transformed. Now, let me show you one picture. I want to show you what it looks like because I have learned through all the years of travel and being in places, that usually when God chooses a place, it's been a stronghold for the enemy. And then he flips it to become a portal for heaven. And Aaron, show that, show that veil first of all. See, what happens when Satan rules is through all those iniquities that have gone on through the years, and I think one of the worst iniquity that we have that we never really talk about is how we grieve Holy Spirit in moving. 
And what all those iniquities do, they go into the ground and they form thrones where the atmosphere are controlled by the iniquitous worship that has occurred. And what happens over a territory when that happens is it covers, it's like it's covered with a, uh, the Bible actually says it like this, that he covered using uh, wealth and sound. Satan in Ezekiel 28, he talks about that. And it forms this veil of occult that holds back the perfect purpose. But starting 13 months ago, all of a sudden, when God says Scranton, all of a sudden, something started happening in Pennsylvania the bloodshed against our first people started getting reconciled in a new way. The covenant breaking that has gone on in the church started getting rectified in a new way. All of a sudden, this veil of the atmosphere started disintegrating and it actually now begins to form like this. Go ahead, Aaron, with the next one. See, all of a sudden, this portal begins to surround the territory. And see, God said, and he had said, without Pennsylvania restoring its root of freedom and the root of freedom that I had planned for America that is so deep and so encrusted by the enemy that dwells in Pennsylvania, without that happening, the Lord had said that once, that America could never come back into its total freedom. And then for him to say, until they began to gather in Scranton. America will not see revival. Now, I want to leave you with how the Lord showed it to me. And I want you to get a picture of that because what used to be the atmosphere here, the Lord's changing it. And you know, I, I learned something from this journey up here. On the plane, I had to make a decision when I was flying from Charlotte uh, to go Philadelphia or Harrisburg. And I told her, which Harrisburg had a mechanical problem. We couldn't take that flight. And, of course, she got the last two seats coming to Philly. And <coughs> the last two seats. <laughs> and she said, I'm sorry, you know, because, you know, when you have status, you fly first class. We were in middle seats. And I was between people. <laughs> and I said, Lord, whoever that was that did not show up that first class seat, find him another flight. And they came on, and I got a text from her. said, go ahead and move up to 2C. The guy didn't show up. I said, thank you, Jesus. I didn't even look back at Aaron. You know, you have to learn. Like Jesus, like God said, 
to Lot's wife, don't look back. Just keep on moving. And I sat down by this lady and she said, I have waited for somebody to get here because I want my husband to sit with me. Will you trade places with him? And I said, I'll do anything if I can just get to Pennsylvania. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. Crazy. Now I'm telling you, it's crazy. Now, Here's how the Lord said it to me. He said, I have chosen Nazareth in territories to shift them from their unbelief and move them into their role of Capernaum host. Nazareth, Joseph came back to with Jesus from Egypt. But Nazareth was so familiar with those 28 years that he lived there, or 25 years that he lived there, that when it got time for him to display his Messiahship, they couldn't receive it. Familial and familiar spirits stop you from seeing the next move of God. And what the Lord was saying, I know the cities to break familial and familiar spirits from. I know the cities that will become a host for the new ministries ahead. Because Capernaum eventually was, he went back to Nazareth. Even God himself couldn't do anything there. So he ended up in Capernaum. And his miracles and power now, what the Lord is doing starting tonight is showing us the Nazareth cities that will be the host for his next move of God. And the Lord says, Get ready. You're a model. You could not have come here tonight lest I sent you. Now I want this front row to stand up for a moment. The Lord says this begins drastic changes in the way that you will start expressing who I am in days ahead. You will not hold back. You will begin to spread who I am and what I am doing throughout the entire territory. The Lord says this is the beginning of a move of God where I will visit cities and cause my people to recognize each other in ways they've never recognized each other before. I say this will be the move that I began where I raise up a kingdom troop that begins to walk together and worship separately and then come back with power together. I say to you, this is the beginning of awakening America's eyes 
to its next move of my spirit. And what was resisted in other decades and other centuries will not have the power to resist what I will be doing in days ahead. Let's all stand up now. You have created a model here. With your worship. And now, I will send you forth to spread my good news of how a city can come alive again and begin to laugh from earth to heaven. I say, Scranton, your joy will be made full again, saith the Lord. Let's thank God for what he's doing, Jamie. Let's thank God for Jamie.